Because so many children are at risk, and to demonstrate the disturbing reality of what goes on in some chat rooms, we enlisted the help of volunteers from a vigilante organization called Perverted Justice. Volunteers of this controversial group are experts at pretending to be children online in order to catch and expose potential predators. And in most states, soliciting a minor for sex is still a crime, even if it turns out the minor is really an adult posing as a child. You had to stop the bank. First, While some in law enforcement strongly oppose any civilian group conducting sting operations, perverted justice volunteers say they are often able to provide authorities, from local police to the FBI, evidence to build cases and get convictions. At the point, this point in taping, we had 30 convictions. 30 convictions. 30. We've had, I believe now, 22 since the first of this year. So we're averaging more, well over to a month. So how do perverted justice operatives find potential sexual predators? First, they go into chat rooms, usually through AOL or Yahoo, and set up a profile of a 12, 13, or 14-year-old. A profile that often includes a photo of a child obviously underage, like this one provided by the girl's mother. Then the decoys wait to be contacted by an adult. In order to avoid the appearance of entrapment, they never make the first contact. But once a chat begins, the undercover operatives make it known they're open to the possibility of sex. A few decoys even seem eager. How quickly do these conversations turn sexual? Sometimes uh, very quickly. As soon as the conversation is, hi, my name is, I'm 14 years old or 13 years old, and the gentleman will then say, look at this, and send you a picture or say something else. And that's, that would be the crime right there. While just setting up a liaison online for sex with a minor is illegal, a face-to-face -face meeting obviously poses a much greater danger. We wanted to know if most predators were all talk, or if they would really attempt to meet a child in person. Thank you for coming all this way. We're set up in this upscale home in a suburb of Washington, D.C. We're ready and waiting for the knock on the door. This lovely home in Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C., has become the secret meeting place for potential Internet sex predators. It's rigged with nine hidden cameras, three with views outside, one pointed at the garage, and five inside the house. Several volunteers from Perverted Justice, the group dedicated to catching Internet predators, are in chat rooms posing as 12, 13, and 14-year-olds ready to make a date for sex with men they meet online. 39-year-old Frag, his screen name, who has been a perverted justice volunteer for more than two years, is posing as a 13-year-old girl in a Yahoo chat room set up for Virginia residents. It's a chat room not intended for romantic or sexual conversations. There's a girl named Kim. As Dateline cameras roll, the undercover operatives enter chat rooms. They're quickly inundated with adults wanting to talk. Here's a 46-year-old who calls himself the Sphinx 59. He thinks he's talking to a 12-year-old girl named Sarah. It takes him only four minutes of chatting online to ask her, are you a virgin? She says she is, and then he asks if she's ever performed oral sex. In this chat, as in many other men's chats, things get much more graphic and disgusting. As soon as those boundaries are crossed, in a lot of ways, the chat tends to get a lot more explicit very quickly. This man, VA male 69 2005, who's 28, thinks he's talking to Aaron, a 14-year-old. He asks her bra size if she shaves anything other than her legs and says there's just something about a teen body. We'll see if he sends a picture or anything. In most cases, the men ask for pictures of the young teens and then send pictures of themselves. Sometimes after the chat turns sexual, the man turns on his webcam and exposes himself. Several men go as far as sending pornographic pictures, hoping to teach the inexperienced child about different sex acts. I'm just trying to kind of get all the pictures of semi-uniform. Here in Virginia, as in many other states, it's generally a crime to send children obscene material, even if it turns out the recipient is an adult posing as a child. He also sent uh, some naked shots of himself. After chatting online about having sex, the decoy suggests a phone call. I don't know, because I'm all blushing. 
23-year-old Dell puts on her best young girl voice. She needs to verify that the man on the phone is the same man in the chat room. Bye. Ugh. The worst thing about doing verification calls is you have to smile while you're doing them so it sounds like it in your voice, even if you don't mean it at all. She can also play the part of a young boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, what? Once a predator has made it clear he wants sex with a minor and makes a date for the liaison, the crime has already been committed. He doesn't even have to show up. But will he? Hello? Knock, knock. The answer is yes. But this man, once he sees me and not a teen, realizes he's made a big mistake and runs for the door. Hey, how are you? Uh, I like you. Come on. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, you're not going to want to do that, I don't think. Here's another guy who doesn't stay long. Hey, how are you? Good, yeah, I'm like so. Good, why don't you have a seat right over here? No, thank you. I'd like to ask you some questions. He makes a beeline out to the garage, barely touches the stairs, and with his arms flailing, runs down the driveway and down the street. Clearly, this man knows he's done something wrong. So does this guy. I'm sorry, you see, this is all myself. No, 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 I want to talk to you for a minute. I'm sorry. No, I want to talk to you. He also makes a run for it. But he didn't come in a car, so he keeps running and running, presumably back to a bus station, trying desperately to hide his face. It may look funny, but what these men had in mind based on their internet chats was anything but. Most of the online conversations were so explicit, we can't even begin to show you. Yeah, come on in and sit at the counter. I've got some water and some chips there for you if you want them. Remember the Sphinx 59? He thinks the girl in the house is a 12-year-old virgin, home alone, and willing to perform oral sex. But like many other men you'll meet, he's in for a big surprise when I walk out. Some think I'm the child's father. Others apparently believe I'm with law enforcement. One thing's certain. None of them knows our hidden cameras are recording their every move, and they'll be appearing on Dateline. How's it going? Good. Why don't you have a seat? Thank you, sir. Nice what you doing here? His name is Aladdin. He lied online about his age, saying he was 35. He's really 46, and instead of admitting he came here for a date with a 12-year-old girl, he says he's here to look at real estate. Yeah, I know that the house is for sale. Oh, that this house is for sale? Yes. I heard about it, a friend of mine is. Aladdin goes on to say that his friend found our house for sale on the internet and he just came to check it out for him. Later, he decides to come clean. Why did you really come here? Uh, to see uh, what's her name, uh, Sarah. Sarah? Yes. And you were talking with Sarah online? Yes. So all that other stuff in the house and all that, that was all a big fat lie? Yes. Okay. Do you know how old Sarah is? No. He tries to convince me that the girl, Sarah, is 18, even though his own words tell a different story. You say you're 35, male, and you say where you're from. She says she's 12. You say, oh, you're real young. You like older men? Depends, I guess. You ask her about her former boyfriends. Did she ever give them oral sex? She says yes. She tells you here that she's 12 years old. What is that number right there? What does that say? 12. 12. Yeah. So that 18 thing was a lie as well. Then Aladdin apparently begins to feel faint. What are you doing? And lies down on the kitchen floor. Are you okay? Yes. yes just... Do you want your water? Our background research reveals that Aladdin is a waiter at a Holiday Inn. He says he's an immigrant from Egypt who became a U.S. citizen two years ago. Why is it appropriate to come to a home he where a 12-year-old girl... He said, we can meet, to the, we can, you can come over to my place, you can, can spend time together. But that, does that make it right for you to do it? No, I feel guilty or I feel better. You'll hear more from Aladdin a little bit later. First, there are more men headed to our house. Meet VA Mail 69 2005. He's the one who said there's just something about a teen body. He's 28 and thinks he's talking to a 14-year-old. He's actually chatting with this 23-year-old from Perverted Justice. He was by far the worst guy I've ever talked to. Dozens and dozens of cases. Yes. Before. What separated him from the run-of-the-mill computer predator? Bestiality, one word. <laughs> 
He chatted online for more than a week with our decoy and slowly introduced more and more depraved sexual requests. He even says he wants to involve a dog. As soon as the guy said, hey, maybe I'd want to do this, and he wasn't immediately slapped down, it's testing the waters. Was this all talk, or would this man actually walk into our kitchen? That's him coming in the door. How you doing? How you doing? Why don't you have a seat right around that stool, please? What's happening? I'm much. What are you here for? Just coming to talk to him. Coming to talk to who? That's it. Why are you so nervous? I just get nervous. I was coming to talk to Aaron. How old is Aaron? <laughs> she didn't tell me. Try again. <laughs> I saw I saw 14. So you thought it was okay to come here to see a 14-year-old girl? No, I didn't. And you say, would you ever try anal? Ouch, that's like it could hurt. Not if done right. You have to be very gentle with that. Quite a Romeo. I'm, I'm a lonely guy. What can I say? He's more than just a lonely guy. We did a background check on VA mail, and it turns out his real name is Joe Wunderler, an Army sergeant stationed at Fort Belvoir at the Intelligence and Security Command. I've never done anything. I'm trying to get help with it. What are you doing to get help? <laughs> seeing a, a psychiatrist right now. Well, it doesn't look like it's working too well based upon all this. I just started talking to him. I mean, this gets pretty freaky here. You talk about sex acts with a dog. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons why I'm trying to get help because I've gotten into approaches that I, that I know aren't right. I guess you're going to tell me next that this is the very first time you've done something like this. Mm -hmm. Actually, it is. I'm six. True or not, remember, this guy tried to entice a young teen into depraved sex acts. It only takes one encounter to harm a child forever. We set aside three days to see how many men would actually show up at our undercover house. To keep track of our appointments, we set up a bulletin board. It didn't take long to fill up our calendar. Total today? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten so far. Some came bearing gifts, like beer, condoms, and a pornographic tape. One man brought shoes and dinner, just what the decoy ordered. You may not think that's significant, but Lieutenant Jake Jacoby, who runs a child services unit here in Virginia, says during undercover stings, it can help get convictions. At times when they show up, um, we like to have them either bring us something or do something so we can show that, that they're doing specifically what we asked them to do. Shows intent. It helps, yes. The men who show up at this house looking for a liaison with a child come from very different backgrounds. And as our investigation unfolds, you might be surprised at just how diverse our group gets. Some hold very prominent positions, more prominent than you'd ever imagine. What do you do for a living? From stalking the chat rooms to knocking on the door, Dateline's hidden cameras have caught a string of men in the act, showing up for a date with a minor they thought was home alone. But you might be surprised at the men arriving next. Again, we want to remind you that some of what you're about to see is sexually explicit. Here's Chris Hansen. During our investigation, there's a parade of men walking up the driveway, through the garage, and into the house. Nineteen men in three days. In almost every case, the man engaged in sexually explicit internet conversations with a person posing as a young teen. And as you'll hear later, most of them said they'd never done it before and would never actually have sex with a minor. Did you bring beer? No, I think we stopped to get some on the way. And perhaps more shocking than the number of men is who they are. Our background checks uncover men leading double lives, men you would never suspect involved in this potentially illegal activity. This man letting himself into our house makes his living working with children. He's a special education teacher. Dell is now posing as a boy the man's expecting to meet. Uh, just sit at the kitchen counter for a minute. Where are you? Oh, okay. I'm, I just, I need to get my new shorts on. Okay. The teacher, Stephen Benoff, believes he's been chatting online about sex with a boy named Brandon who says he's 13. And how old do you think the teacher is? He's 54 and married. When I confront him, at first he says he thought Brandon was an adult. Well, he said he was 23. What's the problem? I have the transcript. That's what the problem is. Brandon said he was 13. 13? 13. And the teacher knows this because Brandon told him online he was 13. You can talk about oral sex, anal sex, 
in all the different things that you'd like to do with him. What are you doing here? I thought I would come see him. But... Come see him for what? I wanted to meet him. While online, our 13-year-old decoy asked the teacher to bring condoms. Did he? Mm -hmm. You did? Yeah. You have them in your pocket? Mm -hmm. What does that say about your intent? Well, I always have them with me, but... What is a 54-year-old man doing coming to this home to see a 13-year-old boy? I obviously made a big mistake. And he wasn't the only one, not by a long shot. Surprisingly, there were many men with impressive resumes, men you would consider trustworthy. You'll never guess what this man, screen name GBABB and SP, does for a living. Come on in, I just spilled that coat all over my shorts. He's an emergency room doctor. Dr. Jeffrey Beck, a 50-year-old, is here to meet a boy he thinks is 14. I'll be right back down. Right. Watch how he tries to follow our decoy upstairs. I can go up if you want. When I confront the doctor, he says he had no intention of having sex with the boy. He only came here because he felt badly for the teen who was left home alone. He was so anxious to have some company when he was left by himself for four days, but under circumstances it sounded neglectful. So you're the good Samaritan? That's correct. During his online chat, the doctor was not as sexually explicit as many of the others who showed up. In fact, after we read to you part of the chat, you'll see he seemed to choose his words carefully. I'd like very much to be your friend. I don't think I even want to have sex with you until you're old enough for both of us not to get in trouble over it. Lots more to friendship than sex, for sure. I would not tell. I'd done it before. Once we know each other well, whatever happens, happens, but I won't meet you for sex. But he does suggest getting physical. After talking about covering the teen with hugs and kisses, the 50-year-old says to the decoy who he thinks is 14, I want to cuddle you and make you feel safe and loved and cared about. Experts in this field say that kind of a discussion is consistent with somebody who's grooming a young boy for sex. You see what I'm getting at? Mm -hmm. What's really going on here? What's really going on was I came over to take him out for lunch. You ask, have you ever been spanked? He says, by my dad, but not for sex. Mm -hmm. You say, could it be fun for sex? He says, I can try. You say, want to spank a dad. Now, you see how that looks. Yeah, it looks pretty bad. The doctor maintains he would never do anything illegal, but acknowledges a meeting like this could appear inappropriate. Now... If you had a teenage son who was home alone, mm -hmm. would you be comfortable with a 50-some-year-old man coming into the house for a visit? I suppose it would depend on the 50-year-old man, but in general, no, I wouldn't. What about this guy? A man in his position is just about the last person you'd expect to be showing up at our house. It's 4 o'clock in the morning in an AOL chat room. This 54-year-old man, screen named Red BD, messages a 13-year-old boy named Conrad, saying, I'm prowling for young men. What he goes on to say in the pictures he sends are so graphic, we had to carefully edit them before putting them on television. And as you'll hear when we read from his chat log, it's clear Red BD knows what he's doing is wrong. You're only 13? Uh, yeah. That's rape. Dude, I tell you that before. Yes, I remember. Oh, okay. Just, you're so, so young. I've never been with a young man like you, but I would like to. While the two are chatting online, we conduct a background check and are absolutely shocked by what this man does for a living. And now he's in our kitchen after making a date for sex with a boy he thinks is 13. Hello? Hi. Hey, hold on a second. I gotta change my shirt. Yeah. Okay. I gotta ask, you still gonna be up for tonight? We'll see. <laughs> so how can I help you? What are you doing here? Not something good. This isn't good. Not good? I think that's kind of an understatement, isn't it? What do you do for a living? A rabbi. That's right, a rabbi. The man who sent naked pictures of himself is a man of God. He's a staff member at a Jewish youth educational organization. Now, presumably, 
you counsel families and children in your position as a rabbi. What are you doing as a, a man of God, as a rabbi, in this house, trying to meet a 13-year-old boy? Instead of answering, the rabbi asks to know who I am. But before I tell him, I want to ask him about those pictures he sent. You sent pornographic pictures. That's a federal offense right there. You know I'm in trouble, and I know I'm in trouble. I am not interested in getting any further in trouble. Then we heard that familiar excuse. This is not something that I've done, ever. You've never done this before. You know, because I hear that a lot. You'll hear more from the rabbi later. Others are on the way. Here comes Special Guy 29. Earlier online, he told our decoy, who was posing as a 14-year-old boy, that he's an 11th grade English teacher. Then he told the boy that he hates condoms, but he's safe. Our decoy asks Special Guy 29 to bring beer and then throws in a request, a technique often used by law enforcement to illustrate intent. He types, side garage is open. Strip your underwear and come in. I be in mine. The man says, I don't wear underwear. So the decoy says, then come in naked. We never thought he'd really do it. But we were wrong. After casing our house, walking up and down the street, here he comes with the beer. And you can guess what he does in the garage. Could you explain yourself? I'm sorry. Why don't you go ahead and cover up? Certainly. I'm sorry. The man's name is John Kennelly. He tells me he's 29 and a bus driver. Then he changes it to a teacher. What kind of conduct is this for a high school teacher? No, I've never done this before. So you just woke up this morning and said, I'm going to get involved in an internet conversation with a 14 year old boy. I'm going to go to his house, strip naked, and walk in with a 12-pack of beer. No, sir. What would have happened, John, if I wasn't here? I probably would have chickened out, sir. After doing a deeper background check on him, we find out he's neither a teacher nor a bus driver. His father says he's unemployed, and he's not 29. He's actually 43. Do you know that it's illegal to have a conversation on the Internet with the intent to have sex with a minor? Yes, sir. He says he knows it's illegal, but it appears that's not enough to deter him. Whether he needs psychiatric help or the hand of the law, he still might pose a threat to a child. Stick around and wait till you see what he does next. This is the identical, identical screen, screen name. Screen name online. This morning he changed nothing. Like the men you've met so far, you're about to see others who are quick to come up with a story when confronted by an adult. But what will they say when they find out they're going to appear on national television? Oh, no. Come on, guys. Men from all over Virginia, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. arrived at this house after chatting about sex, thinking they were meeting a 12, 13, or 14-year-old who was home alone. Nineteen men in three days from the down and out to pillars of the community. I teach school. What classes do you teach? Special education. As the men approached our undercover house, hidden cameras rolled and kept rolling as I startled them and started asking questions. Just about every one of them gave me the same story. So this is the first time? Mm-hmm. You know, I hear a lot of that. Yeah, well, it's true. I've never visited a teenage boy before in my life. First time in my life. Has this happened to me? First time? Yes, sir. So I've never done this before. And some came up with more creative excuses. She said she was 13, as well. I was concerned she was going to be by herself. So I seemed to stop and talk to her. So you're just being a good Samaritan? Yeah. Because there was a 13-year-old girl home alone. Yeah. Right. And so out of the goodness of your heart, you were going to stop by. Yeah, it could be anybody. And, yeah. and babysitter, is that the deal? Well, sort of, I guess. You can order some pizza and you watch a movie or something. This guy named Jonas says it's all a case of mistaken identity. It's not me. I should. So let me get this straight. So there's another guy whose name is Jonas. 
right? Who I'm happens to, to look like you and have the same cell phone number as you, and he has the dirty conversation about sex with a 12 year old girl, but you didn't, but no, you no, end up no, showing up here no, anyway. No. I don't know about that person. Just about every man who walked into our house said he really wasn't planning on having sex with a minor, but we'll never know what would have happened had we not been there. Still, none of what we heard surprises Lieutenant Jacoby of the Fairfax County Police Department here in Virginia. He says he's heard it all before. I've never done this before. We've heard that one. Uh, that's usually probably not true. I'm here to protect them. That's probably one of the biggest ones that we get also. I didn't think I was actually talking to a minor. Again, that's something that we've heard quite often from people. How often do you suppose we're being lied to when we hear those excuses? Uh, usually about 100% of the time. So why would a man with so much to lose risk everything to meet a child for sex? Dr. David Marcus, a clinical psychologist who treats men with sexual compulsions, says it's a powerful addiction. They don't know what's driving them. All they know is they're being driven and they can't stop. And to risk themselves so greatly clearly shows how powerful a riot that is. Listen, I have had a problem with an internet addiction talking to females. Most guys don't go on the internet and say, you know, I'm going to decide to ruin my life today. Most guys go on and say, I need something to make myself feel better. And they're not conscious of what they're doing. And Dr. Marcus says there are different reasons men choose to meet children for sex. Some and this may be a min minority, have a primary attraction to that age group. Others are more um, looking for a situation where they could feel powerful, where they can, again, explore parts of themselves, try to do things in a situation where there is a power differential. Whatever power they thought they had, it's lost as soon as they see me. And now they're about to learn I'm not a parent or the police. First, the rabbi. Could you please show me? I'm more than happy to tell you who I am. I am Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on computer predators. No. Come on, guy. Oh, oh, oh. You don't want it. You don't want it. You don't want it. You've got to stop this. Sit down. Sit down. You don't have any You're rights. Free. You're free to leave any time. Now they knew this was all being taped for the record and for broadcast on Dateline the doctor but if there's anything else you want to say nothing the teacher and if there's anything else you'd like to say we'd like to hear it if and not, the man who stood naked in our kitchen thank you I don't have anything else to say. so what happens now as they always do with law enforcement frag and dell the volunteers from perverted justice have turned over all of their online evidence from the pornographic photos to the online chats to lieutenant jacoby and his child sex crimes unit at the fairfax county police department we are actively looking at some of these cases lieutenant jacoby says it'll be a while before we know if criminal charges will be pursued his department did notify school officials about the teacher and benoff was fired since some of the men were in the Army and Navy, Dell contacted the military, and Dateline was told that those men are under investigation. Perverted Justice intends to put the men's pictures and entire chat logs, including their phone numbers, on pervertedjustice.com. We let the citizens, we have over 20,000 members now in our forums, do their work, which whatever they want to do, a lot of them will contact whoever's associated with that person. Usually that means the man's employer, relatives, and neighbors. Members will direct them to the chat logs and other evidence on Perverted Justice's website, hoping to keep men like these from harming children. You might think being caught on tape would be enough to deter these men from ever entering a chat room again. Maybe not. Wait till you see what Special Guy 29 is up to next. How can we be certain that this guy in this chat room is the same guy who walked into this house last night naked. Coming up, how big a threat internet predators really are. And later, how you can keep your kids safe. Do you ever think to yourself, I can't believe how many of these people are out there? It's overwhelming at times. You might think that this 43-year-old man who walked into our house naked, ready to meet a 14-year-old boy for sex, would be so humiliated after being caught literally with his pants down that he'd never try it again. 
yet we find him right back online in a chat room the very next day. How can we be certain that this guy in this chat room is the same guy who walked into this house last night naked? It's the same screen name. Same, same, same identical picture. screen name. He got busted on special guy 29. He's changed nothing. He's spotted by a perverted justice volunteer who's posing as a 13-year-old boy. He just checked the kid's pick. Even these perverted justice veterans find what's happening hard to believe. If he keeps talking, then that's just going to be beyond comprehension. Yet he does keep talking. And again, the chat quickly turns sexual. And believe it or not, again, he agrees to yet another date for sex. Our decoy asks if he wants to meet at McDonald's. What do you suppose the odds are that a guy like that would agree to another meeting. I would have said zero last night after watching what happened. Well, Special Guy 29 defies the odds and agrees to meet. But first, he confirms the meeting is not about food. He really wanted to make sure it was about sex. Sure enough, here he comes headed towards the McDonald's. I have been in television for 24 years. I just came to get something to eat. And I have very seldom been at a loss for words. Sir, I just came but to get something to eat. But I don't even know what to ask you first. I just came to get something to eat. He later changes his story. Last night, you walk into a house in suburban Washington, naked, with a 12-pack of beer, yes or no? Yes. Okay. Today, you're on the internet again. You have an inappropriate conversation with a boy you think is 13, and you set up a meeting here at this fast food restaurant. What was your intention? I don't know. The man admits he knows what he's doing is illegal. Then why do you do it? That I need help, and that's what I'm seeing a psychiatrist for. As incredible as this looks, that a man would do this twice in two days, Lieutenant Jacoby isn't all that surprised. Don't these people know? that this is illegal and that very possibly they could be talking to a decoy or getting pulled into some sort of undercover investigation? Well, if you look at the Internet and the amount of people who are soliciting these types of crimes, your chances of getting caught, caught are probably fairly slim. Maybe that's why so many of the men who visited our house walked in so confidently, almost like they own the place. Remember Rabbi David Kay? We'll see. Despite his actions caught on hidden camera and his graphic internet exchange, Rabbi K called us several times, claiming he did nothing wrong. However, earlier this week, he resigned his staff position, informing his employer he was going to be featured in this Dateline story. He also had no comment about this picture Dateline found while investigating the rabbi's background. It shows K in a group photo, including two other rabbis, caught and convicted of soliciting a child for sex on the internet. Do you ever think to yourself, I can't believe how many of these people are out there? It, it's overwhelming at times. In the end, most experts agree it's really up to parents to keep children safe from online predators. If you could give parents one single piece of advice, what would it be? Every day, online predators make their way into homes uninvited and unnoticed. This public service announcement alerts parents that online predators are a very real danger and advises them to get educated. If the technology is in your house, it's, it's a parent's responsibility to protect their child. Michelle Collins from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children says the problem is so widespread, your child could be a victim and you may not even know it. If there are phone calls arriving at your house that you don't know the person on the other end of the line, is your child or teenager receiving gifts? Do they have a webcam in their room that you don't you didn't buy? These are all warning signs. These are all things that happen quite frequently in the many cases that we view and that we work with law enforcement on. Collins says it's important for all of us parents to make certain computers are in open areas of our homes, not in kids' bedrooms. We should know who our children are talking to online and closely monitor their use of webcams. The problem we've been seeing recently, webcams. Uh, many kids are finding themselves um, in problematic situations after having used a webcam. A combination of too much privacy, too much technology, at a sexually curious age can really spell a disaster.
Child safety experts agree it's important for parents to take advantage of parental controls offered by Internet providers and use one of the many protective software programs currently available. And Collins has one other piece of advice. One single most important, most basic piece of advice to give parents is to keep the communication lines open with your kids. If something happens online, it's more important that an adult find out about it than, than the child try to handle it on their own because those cases don't always end well. For the last several months, we've been investigating and reporting on computer sex predators, grown men looking to meet underage teens in Internet chat rooms. As part of the investigation, we caught the arrest of this Southern California man allegedly trying to meet a 13-year-old girl on MySpace.com. It's a wildly popular website where teens can find each other and sometimes find trouble. You may never have heard of MySpace.com, but it's a safe bet your kids have. Here's Rob Stafford. They're called social networking sites, sort of a cyber combination of a yearbook, personal diary, and social club. The biggest is MySpace.com. With more than 50 million members, it's one of the fastest growing websites in the country. Everyone has a MySpace and everyone wants a MySpace. It's free, easy to join, and easy to message its members. Kids chat about everything from school to sports to fundraisers for Katrina victims. It all seems like innocent fun, and it can be. But many parents and teens are unaware there are hidden dangers. I honestly just thought it was my friends looking at it. Which is why Shannon Sullivan disclosed so much on her space. I put my name. Did you put your address? I put my address. Where you go to school? Yes. So everything about how to find Shannon was on that site? Everything. Were you worried about doing that? I, I didn't think twice about it. Shannon did think twice about something else. The rules on MySpace say you're supposed to be at least 14. How old did you say you were? Uh, I think it was 18. You think it was 18? <laughs> I was 13 at the time. 13? Yeah. I was just very upset. Somebody looking for a kid could find a kid very easily. I get a report emailed to me every day that tells me what website she visited. What Shannon's mother, Margaret, happens to run the computer system at a private grammar school. She has parental controls on her home computer, and several months ago, MySpace popped up. Ever heard of it? No. She was stunned by what Shannon revealed and found the sites of other kids far more revealing. I found all, all kinds of, of pictures of kids in revealing positions, pictures of kids scantily dressed. It's a cyber secret teenagers keep from tech challenge parents, not as savvy as Margaret. A world where the kids next door can play any role they want, but may not realize everyone with Internet access, including sexual predators, can see the pictures and personal information they post. When Dateline surfed MySpace, we found scenes of binge drinking, apparent drug use, teens posing in underwear, and other members simulating sex, and in some cases, even having it. We also found less provocative pages like Shannon's was, but potentially even more dangerous. Teens listed not only their names and addresses, but even cell phone numbers and their after-school schedules. One-stop shopping for sexual predators, and they can shop by catalog. Internet lawyer Perry Aftab started the website wiredsafety.org, and her safety tips appear on myspace.com. Do parents have any idea what some kids are posting on these sites? Parents are clueless. They're caught like deer in the headlights. Half Tab educates parents and kids about the dangers lurking on the web. Pedophiles are using all of the social networking sites and every other anonymous internet technology to find kids. And social networking sites are where kids are. Half Tab says even kids who don't list their name and address can provide enough personal information, such as the kinds of bands and boys they love, for pedophiles to use to con their way into their lives. If someone knows you like pina coladas and walks in the rain, it's very easy online to be exactly what it is you're looking for, to be your soulmate. Who happens to be a 40-year-old predator? Absolutely. The teens just don't get it. To them, they're talking to a computer monitor. They're playing in an area where they don't recognize the consequences. In the last month, Authorities have charged at least three men with sexually assaulting teenagers they found through MySpace.com. And just this week, 
Police found a missing 15-year-old girl who investigators say was sexually assaulted by a 26-year-old man she met through the site. MySpace members are now warning each other about the danger of sharing information online. Haftab says parents need to find out what their kids are sharing. Say to your kids, I'd like to see your profile page tomorrow. It's important that you give them a day to clean up their page. That'll be the last time you give them warning. Then Aftab says, look at their site. Are the pictures provocative? Their profiles too detailed? Who are they talking to? And perhaps most important, have they kept their profiles private, protected by a password to keep strangers out? MySpace would not agree to an on-camera interview, but did tell Dateline via email that it prohibits posting personal information and has a team that searches for and removes both underage users and offensive material. MySpace said it does not pre-screen the content of its more than 50 million members, but encourages all of them to exercise caution. This is, this is what I'm happy about, that most of them are on private now. Shannon Sullivan's safety lesson came from her mom, who grounded her from the well, internet is, for two weeks. And six months ago, you had no idea this was a danger. Six months ago, I thought it was just uh, another place I can go on the computer. And you were 18 back then. <laughs> <laughs> this is inappropriate. Ma, that is the funniest thing I've ever seen. It is, it's funny, but inappropriate. You know what, her mother, Margaret, did something Aftab says too many parents are afraid to do. Take control of their child's computer. They're afraid of their kids. They somehow think because technology's involved, they're no longer the parent. Get real. You're the parent. If you don't like it, unplug the computer. They don't follow your rules. No internet at all. If you're not the parent, and if you're not going to step in, no website on earth is going to be able to help your child be safe. For more tips on internet safety, including an online safety contract for kids and parents, log on to our website. The address is dateline.msnbc.com.